G'day, I'm James. I've got a little puzzle for us today, it's this one. Here's a 5x5 five five grid of squares, which I started filling in with the first five Latin letters, A, B, C, D and E. Then I filled in the first bottom three rows in such a way that each and every of those five letters appears in each row, exactly once. And I've made sure no letter was repeated in a column. My question is, is it possible to complete the entire square so that each and every letter appears exactly once in each row and exactly once in each column? Can I fill this entire group with the letters A, B, C, D and E? Now, this in and of itself is not much of a puzzle. I bet you can do it, but I'll, I'll try it right now. Um, I'm just going to fill in the top two rows and cross my fingers, hope I do it well. Uh, looks like I could use a D there. Uh, looks like I could use an E there. Uh, that needs a B, um, a C maybe, and an A. Okay, I just chose ones that were missing. Um, does this work out? Because this means this now needs an E, this now needs an A, B, this needs a C, uh, that needs an A, uh, that needs a B, and that needs a D. Oh, I did it, I did it, I lucked out. Oh, so by trial and error, I happen to luck out with this one. But here's my real question. Can puzzles like these always be solved, for sure, with no worries? You might have to search for it, you might get some errors along the way, but do solutions always exist? So if I give you an N by N grid and I use N different symbols and I fill in some rows with those N different symbols, so each symbol appears exactly once each row and no symbols repeat in the column, could you fill in the rest of that square? Whoa, that's the deep question. So I will answer that today, but let me talk about the origin of these things to some degree. I mean, these things are now known as Latin squares, a little arrangement of symbols. Here's an M three by three array using the first three Latin letters, A, B, and C. And yes, each letter appears exactly once in each row in each column. Actually, these things were studied very early on uh, back by a Korean mathematician, Choi Suk Jong, who actually in the, about the year, or oh, there was the year 1700, I believe, he published a work that actually talked about these, these things, arranged the letters this way, because he's doing some mathematics on magic squares and other things. Uh, he actually published a 9x9 nine nine example of one and talked about the mathematics of that. Um, in the Western world we weren't aware of that and we actually know these things as Latin squares to this day because the Swiss mathematician um, in the middle of the 1700s actually also studied these things and he caught, they got called Latin squares because he kept using letters of the Latin alphabet when he was doing this work. So the name Latin square just stuck. Alright, grand. Um, there's lots of mysterious things unknown about Latin squares to this day. There happen to be 12 different examples of 3x3 three three Latin squares. There's only one 1x1 one one Latin squares, two 2x2 uh, two two Latin squares, you can probably write it down and see in your mind. There's 12 of these possible arrangements. But as you keep going up in the size of these squares, the numbers of, of Latin squares that exist is frighteningly, grows frighteningly fast. There are 576 4x4 four four Latin squares, there are 161,000 5x5 five five Latin squares. For 6x6 six six Latin squares, we're at up to 8 and 12 million of them. And the numbers keep growing extraordinarily fast. In fact, no one knows a formula for the sequence. There's no explicit formula for the number of n by n Latin squares that no one knows about. Or at least they're not telling. Uh, there's some bounds on it, so they know like how big it could be and how small it could be somewhere in a range, but they don't know what the actual number is. Unsolved maths. All right, but that, that's, that's too hard for my little brain. I want to talk about proving that if I give you a partially filled Latin square, you're always, for sure, certain to have a solution that completes the whole Latin square. And actually ties in with something I talked about in a previous video recently on semi-magic squares. So look up the video on card piles and semi-magic squares, because I'll use the result from there to prove this result about partially filled Latin squares. Here goes. Okay, to prove that every partially filled Latin square can actually be completed to a full Latin square, you actually do what I, my brain first did. Look at all the information that's missing. For example, I said a D here because I saw a D was missing from, uh, from this column. In fact, an E is missing as well. D and E is missing. Let's record all the missing information. Very handy. And we'll do it column wise. For example, uh, five columns. Column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. And they could be missing the symbol A, B, C, D or E. Alright, so let's record the symbols that are missing. From column one, I am not missing an A, zero A's are missing. I'm not missing a B, zero B's are missing, zero C's are missing, but I am missing one D and one E. In column two, uh, no A's are missing, no B's are missing, but I am missing one C, not a D, but I'm missing one E. Column three, I'm definitely missing one A, one B, not missing a C, not missing a D, and zero E's are missing. Uh, zero A's are missing, but one B is missing, uh, one C is missing, zero D's and zero E's are missing. And finally, column five, one A is missing, no B's are missing, no C's are missing, one D is missing, and no E's are missing. Beautiful. So there is an array that explains all the items that are missing from which columns. Beautiful. In fact, if you look at it, 
Each column is missing two items because I've got two missing rows. Oh, bingo, that makes sense that all these, these numbers here add up to two. Zero, 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 one, one adds up to two, 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 because there's two items missing from each column. But here's the thing. These numbers this way also add up to two. Every row adds up to two, which actually makes sense if you think about it because we want, for example, one A in each and every row. Well, I've got one A here, one A here, one A here, but there's two rows that are missing, so I need two more A's for the two missing rows. I'll need two more B's for the two missing rows, two more rows, two more C's. Each of these rows must add up to C, um, must add up to two, because there's two of each letter still missing. So what we've got here then are, ah, because there's two empty rows, Two items are missing from each column. Every column adds up to the number two. Two symbols are missing from each, for each symbol. Each row adds up to two. I have a semi-magic square. Semi-magic square. And from a previous video, I know a fundamental result about semi-magic squares. It's always possible to choose non-zero entries, one per row, one per column, in any semi-magic square presented to you. In fact, I can see it right here. Um, well, can I see it? Can I do it? Um, I can choose that non-zero entry in column five, that non-zero entry in column uh, three, uh, oh, this non-zero entry here, this non-zero entry here, that non-zero entry here. There, I've chosen five non-zero entries, one per column, one per row. And I claim that tells me how to fill in a next row of this table. In fact, I can see what the circle entries I've done here says, please put an A in column five. Please put a B in column three. Uh, B in column three. Please put a C in column four. C. Please put a D in column one. And please put an oh, E in column two, which I think is exactly what I wrote down before. Okay, just luck out, just luck. All right, and then I know, all right, done it, done it. So it's not missing anymore, not missing anymore, not missing anymore, not missing anymore, not missing anymore. And now I have a semi-magic square with magic sum one. And I know there's sure to be a one non-zero entry in every row in every column. Uh, in fact, it has to be these ones, there they are. That tells me how to finish up the diagram. And I'm sure that's gonna be what I wrote before as well. Beautiful. There's nothing special here about five by five with only three rows filled in. This argument will work for any n by n sized partially filled Latin square. If you've got the bottom k rows filled in, and you've got n minus k rows missing, then you'll recall the missing information and you'll get yourself a semi-magic square with magic sum n minus k. And we know there's got to, got to be a choice there, one non-zero entry in each column in each row, which tells you how to throw in the next, fill in the next row. And then you have a new semi-magic square with magic sum one less and you can keep doing it. Yes, each and every partially filled Latin square can be fully completed. Wow, gotta love these semi-magic squares.